judges and fans. We gather here again tonight for week nine foodography. Each week we ask the shooters to break out their creative side and complete our weekly challenges that are designed to touch on a broad range of topics, genres and techniques. Hence our name, The Shooting Range. Often as photographers, we niche down to shoot what ignites our soul and creativity. In doing so, we tend to let other genres or, uh, sorry, let other genres go or certain techniques that don't apply to what we shoot. And so we ignore them. This competition was designed for all photographers to either broaden their skill set or flex their already stellar photographic skills. Those who push themselves to learn beyond their current knowledge base tend to do well, as these four ladies here have proven already. Thank you to our uh, talented panel of judges who dedicate their time every week to help us with the shooting range. Welcome back Leroy of Leroy Schultz Photography, Darlene Hildebrandt of Digital Photo Mentor, uh, Tammy Darren of This Photographer Studio, and Amy and Jenna Hobbs of Hobbs Photography. Um, please also welcome our guest judge and provider of the beautiful confections featured here tonight, um, uh, Sadia Hashmi of SH Confections and former season two contestant of the Great Canadian Baking Show. Sadia, tell us what it was like competing in a reality elimination style competition similar to what we are doing here at the shooting range. Can you tell us about your experience? And do you have any words of encouragement for our, our challengers? Hi guys, thank you for having me on your uh, judges panel. I feel really honored and I feel even more honored to have shared my confections with all these amazing photographers. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you for that opportunity. I'll say one, actually a two word thing to explain how I felt being on that show, nerve wracking, okay? Um, the auditions were amazing. They were so full of energy. And I was like, oh God, I'm among these people who share the same passion as myself. But going into that tent, it was, it was competitive and elimination style. I will say that it, it was daunting. And it was more daunting for me personally because I've never competed or I've never put my passion where competition is. I've always kept my passion as something not up for judgment. So when I took that passion into that tent, I, I wasn't ready for reality TV. Let's just say I've never watched any reality TV. Um, so it was, it was a learning experience. It was there was so much up to, to process. And there were so many fields within the field of baking that were so new to me. So many things were new to me. I'm very happy and grateful that I went on the Great Canadian Baking Show and not one of the other reality shows, which is more cutthroat. Um, so that helped me a lot. Um, I did come out of it really, I, I don't know how to say, say this. Uh, say it, huh? Sadia, say it. I know what you want to say, go ahead. I, I came out of it pretty shook up. Okay, I came out of it thinking, oh, I could, I knew this, I could have done better. You know, um, like reliving everything um, that happened in those episodes that I was there for. Um, and I could have done better. And I think that's what happens when you put your passion out there for people to judge. It, it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of acceptance um, to, to say, you know, um, things didn't go the way I planned because there's always going to be curveballs that are going to come your way. Um, it's going to be because the oven didn't work or the food processor that you have at home is a workhorse. And the one that you are now dealing with isn't working as hard or as fast as you're used to. So there can be a lot of technical things. It can also be your mind. You're, you're nervous, um, you're anxious because you're going to be judged, you know, and you're working on a time crunch. And we all know 
anyone who's ever been in a competition, five days later, you're showering and you're saying to yourself, dang, I co totally could have done that. And that would have not made me get eliminated. But you know what? It's water under the bridge. Um, it was an experience. Um, it was an experience I needed. Um, or I think it was an experience that God thought I should have under my belt. So I totally feel all of you challengers. Um, and for us, it was it's eight weeks of the show. And that's condensed into a lot less weeks. I can't give that away, but it's condensed into a lot less weeks. And that means that you're just go, go, go. And burnout is real. And I saw that. By the time um, I, I got to the episode, and I'll be very honest with you, that morning when I walked into that tent, I knew I was going home. I knew it. You know, and at that point of time, when I knew that I was going home, I almost was like, you know what? Eh, throw this. I'm throwing in the towel. But then something inside me said, you know what? Just give it your best shot. Give it your best shot. Do what you did. And, you know, if you're going to go, that's OK, too. So that was that was my experience. I'm I'm glad that I was able to pick up my passion again last year. And one of the things that drove me to picking it up was the drive to please, um, to please and help other people less privileged than myself. And I was able to do um, treat boxes last year during the season of Ramadan, during the month of Ramadan. I started with that. I had to ease myself back into baking for public where people would, eat my confections and be like, oh, this is good. Oh, this isn't good, you know? And thank God so far, touch wood, everybody's come back with rave reviews. And I was able to raise a lot of money last year for a lot of the charities that are close to my heart. And up until December, I was running those. Um, and I do plan on more uh, this month, um, this coming Ramadan as well. So keep an eye out for that. But till then, Right now, I'm back into the driving seat, and I am doing what I love. I am sharing the love of baking, of desserts, because nothing beats a good dessert. You could have the best dinner in the whole world. If the dessert isn't good, that's it. That's, that falls flat. So for me, dessert is the best part of the day, and it's just the, it's the perfect ending to your meal so i try to make it as good for others as it is for me and uh, here i am so thank you very much sadia thanks for being with us tonight um scoring this week presented some interesting challenges as we've gotten closer to the final the scores have become closer and closer and in some cases being separated by under 10 points and this week some under five in reviewing the critiques, it was discovered that while the judges really appreciated the storytelling aspect, they felt certain technical elements had been overlooked. And to address this, admin gave each of the challengers an opportunity to submit an additional image for technical review and added the score as a boost to each of the shooter's totals. So right now we're gonna get the show on the road and get going here. So uh, I did not do a collage this week because there was a lot of images and it would just look terrible all on one spot. So for our first one, we are gonna go with Corey Lynn. Um, this is a tea party. Corey Lynn, this week, your cake inspired you to tell the story of a mom going on Pinterest, spending hours to re recreate the inspiration, but not quite perfecting it grateful, um, sorry, but grateful, happy children enjoying the cake anyways. Can you tell us why you felt this story was important for you to share? Um, I think I just resonated with it as a mom. I've done it so many times. You, you know, you have these fantastic aspirations of making these wonderful things and then you get going and think, oh man, I have bitten off way more than I can chew. Typically, it's at about three in the morning when you're realizing, what have I done? And I just thought it would be a lot of fun um, 
to kind of be a little bit cheeky about it. And <laughs> I think this past year has made it even more so where moms have felt like they had to make more out of birthdays or even just every day, like a little tea party or anything where they're trying to make special moments for their kiddos that are stuck inside and haven't been able to be doing all the fun things that they're used to being able to do. So my girlfriend and her lovely girls were right on board and uh, we had a ton of fun doing the shoot. So I hope that the judges liked it. Also, hindsight is always 2020 and we're always uh, our own worst critic. Knowing your personal strengths and weaknesses, if you had time, if you had a time machine, what device would you have given yourself? Sorry, what advice would you have given yourself um, going into this week's challenge? I'd have taken my studio lights with me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where you felt like uh, you missed out then this week in your images? I felt if I'd have had my studio lights with me, it would have saved me a ton of time in my post processing and made shooting it much easier. Um, my girlfriend's home is very bright and well lit typically, but it was a cloudy day and she just renovated and has all new lighting in there and it was causing me a lot of grief. So mm. understandable. Yeah. Studio lights, pack them anyways. Yeah. <laughs> always I should know better all right Sadia while Corey Lynn's story doesn't take a traditional route to a happy ending it still ends with children who are obviously very excited to eat to eat mom's fail did this story resonate with you and have you ever had an experience where you have been inspired to try something new and it doesn't turn out the way you planned but the people you bake it for love it anyways Uh, you might have to unmute yourself. Are you asking me? Yes, that's you. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. yes. I've had tons of failed bakes um, where the kids have been happy and I've just been like, you know what? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. The last one was last Eid. Um, I was in a frenzy. The pandemic had gotten to me. Um, it was a lot to take in and the kids were just happy they got they got something and they were just happy there was a cake on the table it wasn't it wasn't pinterest good and but you know what the kids were happy um and the family made memories and that's at the end of the day that's what mattered so you know they they they'll they might remember the fails but I'm pretty sure they'll remember the memories a bit more, so. And that's yeah. what's important, right? Exactly, yeah, totally. Leroy, making food look delicious is a huge part of photographing food, but sometimes life is just gets in the way. If someone wanted to incorporate a non-traditional story like this into their marketing as a way of saying, skip the stress and mess and buy a cake from me, how could these image be polished to make the story even stronger? Um, I think my first reaction to that question is simplify, simplify, simplify. Um, there's strength in simplicity. Um, so I think when I look at uh, some of the photos, I would have wanted to see them cropped in a lot more. So for instance, the, um, the first image in the sequence, um, you know, we're seeing what looks like the arm of the chair, like crop that in. There's there's carpeting, there's other things there, which I think that it could have still been, um, the story could have been told while cropping things in and simplifying. Um, and then in the very last image with the three kids, I mean, first of all, how can you not love that image with those expressions and that, and that joy? Um, but simplifying, you know, maybe even in the setup stage, get rid of those chairs in the background, you know, simplify as much as possible because then you're in control of the, the storyline rather than say the background is in the control of the, or, or partially in control of the storyline. Thank you. 
Darlene, you asked for humor and you got it this week with Coraline's take on the Pinterest fail. How important do you think it is for a person to connect emotionally with the images that they are shooting? And what effect do you think it has on the images they create and why others or and the way others perceive them, even if they are not technically as perfect as they could be? Um, I think emotion and emotional connection with the photographer to the subject is huge because I mean, in my 30 some years of shooting, I've had to shoot lots of things that I really didn't want to shoot, right? So are you going to do your best job when you're not really interested in doing that thing, right? Or you're, you're doing it for somebody else, right? And like the stuff that I do now for myself, like travel stuff, that's what gets me excited, right? So I can see like the, the kids having great fun here and how Corey Lynn was connecting with them all. And like, even that, you know, mom's got cake on her face in the last picture, right? There's a lot of fun being had by everybody here. And it's clear that the photographer was enjoying it, enjoying it as well. I do think that your lights would have helped as well, Corey Lynn, like, like- Oh, um, absolutely. And like Leroy said, like cutting some simplicity um, and just getting down to the meat of it. But yeah, those expressions, like this, the one with the hands in front of her mouth, she's like, you know, you can almost hear her going <laughs> like this, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's move on to slide number two, please. This one is uh, by Angela and it's called A Life of a Cupcake. Angela, over the course of this competition, challengers have been thrown a number of curveballs, and they still find a way to carry on. One of the struggles you faced this week was that you could not find fresh cranberries anywhere to do one of the shots you had planned. How difficult has it been finding ways to stay creative and find motivation when mo obstacles like, um, like this come up? And very difficult. Um, I actually didn't find out that there were cranberries in the cupcake until I think it was Thursday. So I had actually done some shots. I used blueberries and raspberries. It was hard because what, uh, Steven said last week kind of got stuck in my head where, you know, have some carrots in the shot if it's a carrot cake and that kind of thing. So I was guessing but, and yeah, and then by the time I found out it was cranberries, both grocery stores in town didn't have fresh or frozen because they're not in season. Mm. And I never even thought I could use canned. <laughs> didn't even think about that. But so I faked it in the one shot and I actually used jam on the spoon. But yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's getting harder and harder, definitely. And I had a, another week with kind of a creative block. Mm. Understandable. Angela, you also got your submission in early this week. Um, despite having to reshoot shoot your entire concept at least once, uh, this allowed you to take the weekend off from the shooting range. How did you feel having time to focus on your own projects and priorities? Oh my gosh, it was such a huge break that I needed, like a mental break. So yeah. it was nice to just not think about it because every week it's like up until Sunday and that's all you think about seven days of the week, coming up with something, then shooting it. So it was, it was a great weekend and I got <laughs> lots done. Wonderful. Uh, Hobbs, the shooters were only asked to submit three images to their story. Um, and in the end, we added another one. Um, for you, this was a bit of a cliffhanger. If you could have asked Angela for two more images, what would they have been and why? Well, I'll go first so Jenna know. doesn't steal the good answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, to me, like this is beautifully shot. Looking at this, I knew this was Angela's right away. And to me, looking at that beautiful little child with that cupcake, if you took that photo out of the context of the competition, that's a photo that a parent would like to have and could frame and put on their wall. In the context of photographing the story of the life of a cupcake, the you need, like, to me, if you, I want to see the guts of the cupcake on the kid. <laughs> so I would, um, 
because it kind of takes a little bit of mental not gymnastics but to go from closed cupcake to open cupcake to back to closed cupcake so i would i would have liked to have seen if you could have added on a photo of the end of the after effect the smushed in the how, face type of effect yeah or just like how unless there's children that are much more civilized in their eating habits than mine were at that age, which I suspicion to be accurate. <laughs> it was, it was actually hard to get her to get into eating the cupcake. She just kept looking at it and poking at it and touching it. And yeah, she just wasn't into it. I don't know. No, she must but, not have sugar very often. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, if you were adding a photo onto the story, that would have been a good one to add on the after effects. Jenna? So that's what Amy covered, what we discussed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> she took it from you. Uh, Darlene, you once wrote an article called Seven Tips for Photographing Children. And one of your tips was let the child run the session. Often we will see a child laughing at something off camera instead of being engaged with a photographer or the product. In your opinion, what do you think is more effective to capture an authentic interaction between the child and the product, whether, that, whether that's trepidation or delight, than manufacturing a moment with the product as a prop? Do you have any tips mm -hmm. on how to get a child to authentically engage with a product? Whew, um, tricky. I mean, if the kid doesn't already want to just smush the cupcake into their face, um, that's unusual, <laughs> but like I was thinking of a photo shoot I did with my niece when she was three. I did a day in the life with her and I followed her around all day. And one of the things she did was have an ice cream and she had it all over her face. And I tried like chasing her around to like wipe it off. And then eventually it was, became this game of, no, I'm going to just put it all over my face. Cause I know auntie wants a good photo, but it ended up being the best photo with it all over her face. Right. So often what I'll do with kids is I'll tell them what not to do. And the, the thing that I want them to do is the opposite of what I tell them. Right. So I'll say, do not, whatever you do, smash that cupcake into your face. And what are they going to do? They're going to spread it all over their face. Or I'll be like, don't stick your finger in the icing. Don't stick your tongue in the, in the icing. And then they're going to do it. Right. Cause they've got that rebellious. They'll get this look in their eye. Like I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. My niece had this phrase when she was three, and it was, I will, Auntie, I will, I will do it. <laughs> and that was it. So no, whatever I told her, she would do the opposite of. So that's kind of my little trick with kids, especially that age, um, is to, to tell them the opposite. Thank you. Tammy, cupcakes are a strange beast to photograph. They're almost spherical in shape, which can make it difficult to decide the best angle. For example, some articles advise against using a flat lay for cupcakes, while others encourage it. What kinds of things would you consider when deciding whether a flat lay, an eye level image, or another angle altogether is best to showcase, sorry, to showcase what is essentially a little round ball of delicious? Gas cupcakes, oh my goodness. I hate photographing cupcakes. <laughs> We've done so many weddings where they have cupcakes and I'm like, oh, cupcakes, because cakes are definitely a lot more interesting. You can do much more angles with them. Um, with cupcakes, uh, especially with, uh, you know, you've got the little flowers on top and stuff. I think, you know, the shot where she's shooting from above, you can definitely see the pretty petals of the flowers. I really like that. Um, the other one, I had a little uh just the one with the red plate i think the angle there i feel just because the plate appears to kind of be standing and floating there um i think going down a little bit lower on that one would have shown the center of that cupcake better so in that instance yes uh if you want to see that filling you got to get right down to that filling and shoot that a, a lot closer up so a close-up of that would have been fantastic rather than the three cupcakes on a plate far away i do love the uh in, the inclusion of the beaters and and the jam and stuff that was awesome but yes angles are everything so the top angle one yes awesome the plate angle one not so 
awesome. I think close up and down to its level would have been perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, let's move on to slide number three, please. This one is done by Rain and it's called Down to the Last Piece. <clears throat> Rain, as a self-proclaimed noob, this week you made two discoveries. One, taking food pictures is difficult. And two, you prefer dark and moody images. Um, how, did, how did these, um, sorry, how did those two things factor into how you shot and presented this week's challenge? Yes. Um, how did those factors? So I think one of the things was really like trying to figure out my lighting and my exposure or what am I saying? My aperture, uh, just to make sure my exposure was bright enough because yeah, like I've realized over the this whole competition that when I take images, I, per my eye prefers a darker, a darker exposure, which I know isn't like I've learned anyways, isn't tech, like isn't technically desired by the feedback I've gotten in general. And so playing around with that. Um, and I, I only have one window and unfortunately wasn't able to get into a different space. So I waited until this perfect part of day. And like, I honestly had a lot of fun, um, even though it was really difficult. And there were some times where I was like, probably more stressed out than I should have been. Um, I took um, a lot of the pictures actually before the judging on Wednesday, which I, I probably would have uh, waited in hindsight just to hear what the judges uh, had to say after the the judging because I had already cut the cake like there were certain shots I couldn't reshoot I had different ideas that um, I needed to change uh, which would, again I, I really enjoyed like the discovery of how much more work this is going to be than I thought it was um, and picking everything but yeah I, I really ultimately um, I, I kind of knew people would go with a brighter look, especially from what I was seeing, but there was something about this cake and just the elements in the flowers um, and like the petals and stuff that just really felt woodsy to me. And it, it honestly reminded me of my wedding, which I had in the forest. And I just love those vibes. And for the kids, we were just like, we're really naturey and it really resonated with that, us in that way. And so we just decided to stack a bunch of firewood and put some moss in there and and really like have as much fun as we could I probably shot four days four or five days different like I took probably 1500 pictures of variations of the cake and it was so hard to choose three um but ultimately um I'm really like happy with what came of it, even though there's probably more things about this week that I would change than any other week personally, but I look forward to hearing what um, people have to say about it for sure. Awesome. Also Rain, the shooters have been asked time and again to pay close attention to details. And one of the details most of them picked up on this week were the expressions on the children's faces. Can you explain what mood you were trying to convey? Yeah, so um, that's a tricky one too. So the kids were like really intense about this cake. And I remember like reading things and I was like, guys, can you, like I was trying to get them to originally engage in a more like laughter in the background kind of thing. And unfortunately the images that I did get like that were not, like they were really off, whether it was the angle or the, um, the depth of field or whatever. And it just, it, as much as I loved some of them, I was like, this is not a good picture. And so ultimately I kind of went through what um, worked overall when it came to their expressions. And in this particular picture, it was like this, it was the moment I was like, finally, I was like, okay, you guys have to wait. You like, you have to wait. And then I was like, all right, are you gonna go in for it? And it was like this moment of like, it's gonna happen. And, but it was a youngest goes first, which is kind of a rule in our house. So I felt like, um, this image probably conveyed the emotions more accurately and genuinely in the sense of like, okay, the oldest is like, you know, bummed that he has to wait his turn for this last piece of cake. The middle child literally is like, she's a sugar fiend. So she, I think she's got this look of like, that looks tasty. And then my littlest is like, really intense in general. And she's like, I'm going in for it. So for me, I'm like, this reflects my kids, but I was um, not sure how the judges would take it. Um, but that's kind of like what, in the long answer, what, what was going on there. Wonderful. Thank you. 
Uh, Darlene, one of the most difficult things with photographing a cake is deciding how and where to cut it. If you've been shooting this, if you had been shooting this cake, how would you have pro uh, prioritized showing the inside of the cake over cutting into the de decoration? Good question, because I think that was one of my comments um, on the second image with the hand holding the plate. I really, really so wanted, badly wanted to see the inside of the cake because it was, if it was just a one of shot, then that if that was the only shot you were taking, then I would show the outside of the cake on the cake itself and show the inside on the cut piece, right? So you've got both going on, but since you've already got a shot of the outside and it's, it's really well done and it's clear, show me the inside of the cut piece because I'd love to see like that it's moist and like I found myself trying to go like this to look inside the cake, right? Like I want to know what's in there because I wanted to, like the outsides are pretty, but they're not super appetizing, right? Like you want to see the lusciousness of the cream and the jam and the whatever else is inside. But I love the props that you used here. Like you talked about the dark colors and everything and the woodsiness of it. I think it really went with the cake. Like I got that, right? So the brown flowers and the brown stuff, the only prop that I would have potentially changed would be the, the white table that you put it on in the first one um, or whatever that is. Cause it kind of like, I would like to see a wood table to go with the theme, right? Or even just a piece of wood, like just get a cutting board or something that's that's in that same theme. But you've got like the, the fabric on the last one that goes back to a natural look. And then that gold plate really kind of doesn't, it kills that same natural look. So I don't know, like when I was doing food photography, I had probably, 20 different single plates, all different, right? And different cutting boards and different knives and forks and cups and all these things. I had a cupboard full of just plates, right? Like all one offs. Um, so trying to find like the right plate to put it on. If you don't have one that was more woodsy, like maybe just a white one or something like the paper plate, I feel like it did an injustice to that, to the fancy cake. But I think in terms of like the cut part, just rotating the cake a little bit would have, would have helped. And the same with the last one too. Like, again, we're seeing the icing. I want to see sort of like more of the side of what she's actually going to eat. Thank you. Leroy, when you were first starting out as a photographer, did your photography follow your style or did you adapt your style to what you wanted to photograph? And when you get requests for things that you aren't interested in or that don't fit your brand, how do you respond? Uh, so sorry, the first question was when I was first starting out, whether uh, uh, I I put myself first and my style first or what somebody wanted. Um, did your photography follow your style or did you adapt your style to what you wanted to photograph? Um, it was more adapting my style to what I thought the client wanted. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, I... I I think most of us when we're starting off uh, don't have a really good sense of what our style could be. Um, maybe we don't have the confidence and, and I didn't to maybe just impose your, you know, your thoughts on something or you just, you're still in the process of developing that. Um, so it was a lot of it was, was, you know, what, what does my client want, you know, but asking them to show me images that they like, for instance, so that I could um, aim to provide that type of image. And um, so maybe now at this time, when you get requests for things that aren't interesting or that don't fit your brand, how do you respond to that? Well, I've, I've been a generalist um, intentionally. Um, so a lot of times um, I take the approach that, you know, if it's something that I'm really not interested in, I may still push myself to do it because that's where, you know, you grow as a photographer a lot. Um, you know, and, and not to do a disservice to a client. I mean, if it's something that I absolutely have no interest in, I'll pass that on to someone else. But, um, you know, I, I'm willing to give a shot to any type of, of photography um, if I think that I can provide what the client wants and needs, even if it's not something that I'm immediately intrigued by. Because often that process, and they, you know, I hope, hopefully the contestants in this uh, contest have have seen it that process sometimes 
teaches you a lot. And, you know, sometimes you find that sense of intrigue and interest by doing something that maybe originally you thought, you know, I'm really not interested in this. Um, and no matter what you're shooting, you're gaining experience that you can bring into any other given type of shoot. Um, you know, and I've seen that over and over in my career, you know, if you're shooting, um, events, well, that overlays with, uh, wedding photography, or if you're shooting, um, you know, architecture, well, that, that impacts other things you're doing. You're shooting landscape that can, um, overlap with portraiture. You know, it's the idea for me, and I think it would be something that I would stress to any photographer is become as well-rounded as you can. Um, and sometimes that would mean doing shoots that you might not think you'd be interested in and you might find out differently. Thank you. Hobbs, how did you discover your genre and how do you weed out the projects that you aren't interested in shooting? Uh, when we started, like Leroy said, we too were trying to photograph what we thought people wanted. Um, and Amy and I have gone up and down with what we photographed, with our editing style, with what we've enjoyed, what we haven't enjoyed. Um, I would say in the last few years, we've kind of finally hit a steady we like documentary family photography. We also shoot other things. Um, but that is, we've discovered our passion. It's what we want to develop our craft in. Um, however, we also want to make a sustainable living. So we do take on work that isn't exactly right up our alley. Um, and like Leroy said, even though it uh, isn't our passion, it's something that we can develop at and get better at and then in a roundabout way will contribute to our overall ability abilities um, around photography um, and that being said we are all about sustainable business and for example we shoot kids do we when we get an inquiry about a newborn that wants to be photographed you know in a baby burrito with a beautiful flower in a basket you don't want us to do that so we will um recommend you know the best edmonton newborn photographer and send our clients that way thank you amy did you want to add to that um i mean i second i we start we started off as jenna said shooting everything but i think what I've been thinking about a lot lately, especially because I've been needing to articulate this to our mentoring students, is that I became really passionate about photography because I wanted to document my life and my children's life. And then I got sucked down the lifestyle rabbit hole because that's what was trendy and people wanted but it got to a point where it was starting to feel a little soul sucking because I was meeting people in a random field and making the same things over and over again. And so that's when we really reevaluated and went back to what first ignited that passion to create, which was documenting real life. Because when I closed my eyes and I thought about all the biggest memories in my own life. It wasn't something that was um, posed by anybody. And so like Jenna said, we will now turn away certain work that is like if people are insistent, they want the baby in a flower pot photos. We are, I'm not doing that. I would suck at it and I would do a shitty job of it. Um, but there is also, as Leroy said, a huge value in pushing yourself outside of where your comfort is. One of our, men our year long mentorings, we spent a lot of time doing conceptual work, a lot of time doing conceptual work. And um, the impact we saw when we brought the, what we learned from doing conceptual work back into our, photo our documentary family work was huge. And in the time you couldn't really see that correlation, but then it, kind of opened your brain to thinking and seeing a different way in your documentary work that wasn't so literal all the time. Thank you. 
Let's move on to um, slide number four, please. This image is done, these images are done by Shalene and is called Indulgence. Shalene, how would you describe your style of photography and what do you like to shoot and why? Huh. That's a tough one, my style, I don't know. Uh, I like things to have, I don't know, it's, it, that's a tough one. I Mostly because I shoot wildlife photography actually. Oh. Um, just because, yeah, actually. So, um, so you stepped out your, <laughs> you stepped way outside of your your comfort zone here. Way outside of my comfort zone with most of this because I really do. I really love a good landscape, and I'm lucky enough that most of these uh, critters cross across my backyard. And I'm lucky enough that I spend enough time outside. I'm like, oh, there goes one, and I go grab my camera, and lo and behold, like. I've had times where I've been sitting in my van waiting for my kids to jump in and a moose has walked right behind me. And lucky me, I've had my camera sitting right in my console and I get pictures. Um, so <laughs> I have done a little macro photography. I love flowers, really love that kind of work. And a little fashion photography for my daughter because she models and because of her pageantry and that just simply that grew out of just really needing images quick for promotional stuff but this type of um you, you I guess the word like like Amy was saying conceptual stuff where you like have a have a plan about how you're going to shoot this and putting it all together is really new for me, um, not that I'm not crafty and I love putting together a good scrapbook and I love all that stuff and I love my family history and my mom shot a lot of pictures and I've got zillions of albums and so I, I, I love a good project like that. So this feels a little bit more to me like really seeing a project through right from the beginning till the end, which is not normally how I shoot. So I guess my shots are more spontaneous if you had to say my style, like, oop, there it is, I'll shoot it. So this planning thing and, you know, the full tailed execution that you can off, often get when something's moving, <laughs> like when your moose is taking off on you and you have finished your shot, it, it, this is a real stretch for me. Well, you've made it to week nine, so <laughs> you've done all right, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, one of the comments during last week's Zoom was that the judges didn't want to see three of the same images from a slightly different angle. So you took a huge risk and submitted a series of three slightly different images from the same angle. You also mentioned that there were more pictures in the series. What was your inspiration for this triptych and how did you settle on these three? Oh. I had shot, a t well, I mean, as you can tell from the single photo that I also submitted, I shot a zillion different ways. When I first started on this, like before we'd gotten to the meeting, I had pulled out all of my granny's vintage bowls, china, plates, whatever, and I had tried a whole ton of different things with it. And then I heard the storytelling part, and I'm like, well, I know that's really important, and I know that's, that's a huge part of the challenge. And I'm thinking, okay, so I thought a bunch of ways, like, oh, how do you get from a whole, if that's similar to Angela's, how do you get from a whole plate to a bite to the person enjoying it? And I noted that, uh, that Sadia said, like, I want to see people enjoying my food. And I'm thinking, I can't make that leap from the plate to the mouth, you know, without like kind of making it hugely stretched. So I thought, that's fine. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take the risk and shoot the cupcake from the same angle but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess it up. I'm going to make the cupcake get decimated. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be the same. So although it's the same angle in the shots, it's not the same cupcake anymore. Okay. Thank you. Um, this question here is for Tammy and the Hobbs. Um, you felt that this was a good concept and in your critiques suggested that it could have been taken even further. How would you have elevated this? Tammy? Elevated. That's a good word. Um, I'm just going to go back to my critique because I think that's probably where I'm going to go anyways. Um, 
basically I felt that this image, yes, it was very repetitive. It was essentially it was the exact same image three times in my mind. Um, it's cool and I did say I really love the concept. I love the fact that she used candies on her lips. Uh, I thought it would be really cool if you actually used the same candy that might have been on the top of the cupcake, which was gold. That would might have been, I could have added some cool elements. Um, I just want to give you a couple tips actually as far as lighting and stuff goes. Because um, I don't want to tear the things apart, but I definitely want to just give you Sorry, I got two computers here. I'm just gonna go to the big screen here. So as far as, uh, so we've got a chocolate cupcake here, right? And we've got some very dark nail polish and it's kind of blending together. So what my suggestion was, was maybe to light it differently so that, you know, you don't have the nail polish blending into the cupcake in a couple of these. Um, but yeah, I really, I really thought it was actually quite cool. Like, it looks yummy. It looks like she's enjoying it. But yeah, the lighting was a big one for me. Just just pop that light up a little bit more and, and, and really separate um, the nail polish from the cupcake, I guess, was the biggest one. The focus on the skin was a bit off on the model. But yeah, it was a good attempt. You did a great job. I really did enjoy this one. Thank you, Tammy. Hobbs? Well, I'm going to out Jenna as a secret America's next top model junkie. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we agree that this we disagreed on this image. Like, this is the first time I think Amy and I, in yet in the competition, have disagreed, right? Yeah. And Jenna made me cry and I went along with her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't remember you what can the talk question about. was, but I can speak to it. Um, what we could do to elevate this. We, our, our discussion was based on, I was drawn to this image because of my love of America's Next Top Model. I got that sort of glamour vibe to it. Um, I wanted it to be crisper in the background and lighter and brighter, uh, just to give a little more, a little more crisp and white. Um, so I really liked the image. It, as Amy and I are storytell for, storytelling photographers, you know, it is a micro story. It is very, very short from cupcake to lips. Um, However, I was team yay and, and enjoyed these images. Thank you. Sadia. Yes. The, ch the challengers were asked to look at your brand and mm -hmm. consider what it already had and what they thought might add to it. Your mm -hmm. Instagram feed tends to be on the bright and airy side but these are more on the glamorous and opulent side. Right. Have you ever considered selling confections inted intended specifically for adults to spoil themselves before? No, I haven't. Usually they're not geared for kids. I don't do novelty cakes. Um, and even when I do do them, it has to be, they're a little bit more minimalistic and they're a bit more on the artistic side. Um, so this, I really liked this image. Like I loved the glamour aspect of it. I love um, growing up in Bahrain. Um, it is a very fashion conscious environment, you know? Um, it is also a very food conscious, food loving environment. So, and, and this image totally took me back to uh, my days in Bahrain where um, women had their like, you know, having your nails done, being um, just being very um, me, like having a full face on was, was the normal thing, you know? And this just brought back that glamour um, that I had grown up with and seeing somebody glamorous like this model 
enjoying this cupcake. It just was like, she let herself go. It was beautiful. It was dark and, you know, the flower. Um, so it was, it was opulent. And then this glamorous model was enjoying it. So I, I loved that part of it. And, and I think this was, this image um, really gave me some things to think about, like, you know, um, to maybe add that glamour element, uh, that opulent element. I would really um, like to see that in my brand going forward. Yeah, that's something that I thought about. Thank you, Sadia. Um, Hope, you can take off the slideshow right now. So judges, uh, I don't have any more specific questions for anybody, um, but do you have anything that you would add, like to add to any of the, uh, any critiques that you'd like to add to the images tonight? You can just raise your hand and we'll go from there. Darlene. Sure. Oh, I'll come to you guys next, Hobbs. Darlene. Sure. Just to continue what you guys asked about with elevating the last cupcake shot, um, I'm looking at my other monitor as well. Um, I had an idea for you as well. Um, the first shot, instead of being from the same sort of profile angle, what if the cupcake was in front of her like this and you were focused on the cupcake and then she was kind of more in the background and that would have given you another variety and then the cupcake instead of being on the plate, she's holding it still, but it's more of the focus than having the face in. That was the only idea I had while you were talking about that. Yes, yes, and I'm sorry, I forgot to answer the rest of Billy's question. She said, I did have more images in this, and one of them is a little bit more where the cupcake is at a different angle, and her lips are a little less out of focus, and she's, it's just the lips coming at the cupcake. And I didn't choose that one because the lips are out of focus. And I kind of thought, okay, that's no good. And then there's a, there's a fifth one that I would have, I would have wished, I would like to have submitted a panel of five. Cause at the end of it, this is where she starts to kill herself laughing. And you can see a dimple in the side of her face and her lips are a total mess and the cupcakes a total mess. And, and you oh, can I see the crinkle in her eye. Yeah. And I almost put that one in instead, but it seemed like well, I would have had, I didn't know which one I should have cut. I didn't want to cut the one where the little crumbs were falling off. And, and then I thought maybe it was just too, too much space anyway. So yeah, if I could have done five, that probably would have made that just a little bit better, but yeah, I know what you like mean by the different my angle. Phone, if my phone was the cupcake, I'm um, yeah. right. So you've got, like yeah, more, yeah, for sure. Like that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Hops. No, I just made a little note to Rain specifically when you talked about how you're sort of figuring out that you like the sort of a moody or darker image, um, which I can relate to. I, you know, I went through in my 10 years of photography, figuring out what I sort of liked. I shot the white and bright. Um, and I would say my style has a very moody style to it. Um, but be aware that if you like the moody, you need to read the light well, whether it's natural light or artificial light, you need to expose for those highlights and be aware of your shadows because that is where the moody is going to come from. Not less light, but really seeing the light and then um, using it to set the mood of your photo, which if you're going for that dark and moody, and that's what it'll come from, the light and the dark, the light and the shadows. I have an article on that on my website, Rain. Um, I'll share it in the public group for everybody. Cool, yeah, thank you. And it's definitely new awareness recently. And I'm like, I do like this, but yeah, how do I do it right? <laughs> like, I don't know. So that's really helpful. Thank you so much. Any other judges? Any other critiques that you'd like to add this week? I would like to say um, something. I think I got a chance. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tammy. It's okay. Okay, sure. Uh, I just wanted to tell you guys, you guys did an absolutely fantastic job this week. And we just want to recognize the fact that you guys are kicking some serious butt every week. And I'm just happy it's not me because I don't think I could have the brain capacity to do what you guys do week after week after week. So just know, like, even when we're hard on you, we're just trying to be judges, you know, you, you watch reality shows. Oh, you're, you're cutting out. Tammy, you've cut out. We can't hear you. 
did we miss? Um, did we miss the whole thing? Not the whole thing, no. <laughs> what part did you get? To? Reality show. Yeah. Reality yeah. show. Reality ended at reality oh. show. God, that's quite a bit of stuff. Okay, well, <laughs> so you guys all watch reality shows and they're, they're judges. That's their job, right? Their job is to come in there and find the best to the best, right? And they got to eliminate someone, and that's really hard. But what I want to just say is listen to what everyone has to say for critiques and, and, and just take that to heart and, and, not, and not take it too hard, but just take what you can and go with it and improve and... And, and if it doesn't work out, just know, like, it's not that you failed. It just means it's just not your time this time. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks, Tammy. Uh, Amy. Um, well, I got to talk, I think, about almost everybody's that Jenna didn't talk about, except for Corey Lynn's. And I was super excited to see a cohesive story like really excited about it so thank you for going out on the limb and doing that um i think as you mentioned it is really hard um it's hard to document a story but it's even harder you would think it would be easier when you can manipulate the scene and have control but it can even be harder because then you're ultimately responsible for every single element in that scene so um was it perfectly executed no but i so appreciated seeing a story that had a very definitive beginning middle and end so thank you thank you thank amy you. It, was, um, thank you. it was hard <laughs> so not my thing <laughs> leroy uh, so i just want to say um a few things uh, starting with the fact that I find it astounding that um, nine weeks into a competition like this, you guys are sticking to it. You guys are, you know, Rain's comment that she shot 1500 photos for this set. Um, that's stunning. <laughs> you know, like um, if, if, you know, we were all in a boarding school and this is all we had to do that would be a lot simpler, but everyone's got lives. You know, most of you have kids, you know, you're dealing with life in general and still you're producing things that, um, that show, I think a, a progression from, you know, week one to week nine of, um, hopefully you feel like you've grown as photographers. And I think we as judges see it. Um, and you know, you're taking the feedback, uh, both good and bad, which is uh, always part of photography. Um, and you're doing something with it. So, you know, my first thought when I looked at uh, all of these images was we're seeing the storytelling that we asked for. You know, we're seeing attention to detail that we asked for. We're seeing a lot of things that we asked for. Um, and, and as the competition progresses, of course, it's going to be more complicated, the each weekly challenge. And, you know, as judges, are, we're going to be expecting more out of you week nine and week 10 and et cetera than we were in week one. Um, but I just, I want to say hats off to uh, those of you sticking to it. And, and you know, I, I'm seeing growth um, even on, you know, that we've, we've had a lot of different subject matter and it's not easy to just take what you like taking photos of and deciding or being told in this case, what else you're gonna be taking photos of and making it something that's presentable that you're sharing in public. I mean, it's, I think hats off to all of you for, uh, for all your efforts uh, with this. Thanks, Leroy. Right. Any other critiques tonight? Nope, okay. Um, you four ladies have shown a great amount of drive and determination to keep going to keep producing great images week after week, even with all the twists and turns and continuing stresses of the world today. Hope and I wanna thank you for giving it your all. We've now become attached to you. We look forward to seeing your faces each and every week and hearing about your week and how you, you were shooting. 
Um, so we wanted, so we wanted to let you know that you are appreciated, that you are amazing women who are absolutely killing it at life right now. And judges, if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourselves um, right now and in, join us in applauding these ladies tonight and sticking with this. So way to go ladies. Um, tonight's prize is provided um, to the winner um, from our guest judge, Sadia. Uh, Sadia, do you wanna tell the winner what they've won tonight? So the winner has gotten um, an opportunity. They can pick the March treat box or they can wait for another month. Um, I will be doing these monthly treat boxes all the way till December. God willing, and there's no curveball. So these, I do plan on doing them till December. So you guys can pick a month and these are all themed. So summer might have something that you can take on your camping trip. Um, so you guys, whoever the winner is, gets one of the monthly treat boxes. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you, Sadia. I'm just going to say, if I could claim a month, this is it. <laughs> but this is Ramadan. Or this is Ramadan. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just buy every month, Hope, and then you'll be fine. <laughs> um, so now we've come to the part or where we let you know where you've all placed this week. And I'm not gonna lie, it's getting harder and harder each week to say goodbye to someone. Um, Cause honestly, we would just want you all here all the time, <laughs> but we know that, you know, it's gotta end at some point. So tonight in third place and safe for this week with your indulgent, with your image indulgence, Shalene, you will be here again next week. In second place and also safe for this week is Corey Lynn and Tea Party. So Rain and Angela, here, um, here we are, and one of you is the one. Really froze. But unfortunately this week, Angela, you are to empty your clip and leave the firing line. We have loved seeing your images each week and we are truly sad to see you go. Rain, that means that you are our winner again for the third week in a row. Congratulations. Good job, ladies. We've uh, appreciated seeing you all. And um, yeah, uh, Angela, would you like to say anything? Uh, just thank you for having me. And it's been fun. And it was nice to get to know everybody. And keep in touch. Well, I know you and I will keep in touch because we got SP. Mm -hmm. today, so yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for um, giving us wonderful images week after week. Um, it's tough, you know, I'm coming to the point now where I wanna get emotional. So we're just gonna stop that for a second and we'll move on. Rain, do you have Billy anything wants, that you- Billy's, Billy wants to cry and she doesn't <laughs> want to cry. So yeah, we're there. Rain, would you like to say anything this week? Um, I actually feel really emotional, not even, for me, I'm like, yeah, like what you're saying. <laughs> and I think you guys are all just saying such nice things and it's got me in the feels. Um, I'm honestly like super surprised. I wasn't sure if I would, honestly, every week, I don't, I have no idea. I've told Hope there's been times that I've, I've won the week where I'm, I for sure thought that I would be last. I have no discernment and I'm, uh, I'm super grateful that uh, I get the feedback that I do and, um, I feel honored to have won it again. And I, I honestly love your guys's like the other competitors. I love your images so much. Like I am more excited to see what you guys come up with Sunday night. Like for real, I'm like reload every time I know after seven o'clock. Oh, uh -oh. did I cut out a little bit? You're frozen too, but I think we can still hear you. Nope, not anymore. <laughs> Oh, is it just me that's frozen or is it just rain? No, I think it's just rain. Oh. Poor rain. Poor rain. Could I add something for Angela, for Angela before she goes? Sure. Um, 
I hope that she will come hang out with us next week as well as Karen. You guys are like the, the cheering party. You can like be in the background eating your cupcakes or something. But I just wanted to say I enjoyed your images every week, Angela, and I wanted to eat those cupcakes. So you were the only one that showed the inside and uh, that made me want to eat it. So thank you. I went and I got this other thing this week because you guys were all eating cake. So I had to go have cake. So it's all <laughs> of your guys' fault. <laughs> Uh, Dad, oh. I have I have a question for you. Did Leroy order a cake yet? For me? No, he hasn't. But I already have right. something going on in my head based on his images. Um, nice. Kind of I've, I've had a busy week. That's the only excuse I have because okay. otherwise I should have ordered something already. And I still yes, owe sir. you a, I still owe you a, a text, idea. I haven't forgotten. Uh, I'm here. Angela, can I just add something over here? I felt like your images were so, are you there? Yes. Yep. Okay. I just felt like the images that you shot, they were so bright and clean. And so what I am drawn to, and I love the image of the little girl. I just felt like she was, she had a cupcake and she was just she saw an adult and she was like, do I eat the cupcake or do I just pretend it's in my mouth? So I loved it. Thank you so much for showcasing that. And thank you so much for going out of your way to find cranberries in this season. Um, living in the city, um, it's easy for me to just grab some frozen ones and we're still in the winter. So I wanted to capture the winter um, flavors in the cupcake. So thank you. I really enjoyed the pictures. You're welcome. Can I just can I just say something really quick? Yeah. Um there's so many things I could say about all of these images. Um but it, you know speaking of the Angela's photo of that little girl, what it reminded me of is you know when you're a kid and you put a dog treat on a dog's nose and you're like stay, stay. <laughs> and you, you know and I can just I you know I I just being in that place of, okay, can I eat it yet? Can I eat it yet? Of course, the storyline is turns out is different, but that's what I was visualizing and it uh, it made me smile. Oh, there goes Darlene. That phone is pretty heavy. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw this out here. I have been with a lot of toddlers in my life. You cannot control any of them. No. You deal with what you get. Yeah. And I love toddlers. I love them to pieces. But you just get what you get. Yeah. And I like I really connected with the picture of that whole I'm I have a cupcake, I'm looking at you and I'm sticking my tongue in it. Deal with it. I got hundred percent. I've been there so many times. All right, everybody. I was oh. photographing my my cousin's wedding years ago and I wasn't really doing weddings at the time, but it was my cousin. So I said I would do it for them. And there was this little boy who was the, the ring bearer and he just kept, they had cupcakes as well, the dreaded cupcake tower, right? And he just kept kind of hovering around it. And I was, I just kind of sat nearby and watched him because I knew he was going to do something. Like he kept looking like, you know, is anybody watching me? So first, like he stuck his finger in one, right? And then he literally like just came up and just licked one. <laughs> And I got a picture of him licking it. And then I was like, okay, you know what? I think that one's yours. <laughs> just, just take it. Just take it to your table. There you go. I said, uh, you can have one. I'm an adult. Go ahead. <laughs> awesome. Just, everybody. Code for I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, everybody. Um, we're going to end there tonight, unless I've forgotten anything, Hope. No? Okay. So we're going to end there tonight. Um, yeah. We'll see everybody next week and we'll keep in touch. And um, Angela, you'll be in the group until Sunday. Okay. Hi, my name is Nicole Shudra and I'm the owner of Fireside Images here in Sherwood Park. Hello shooters, congratulations to making it to week 10 judges choice. As a high quality printer, I spend a lot of time looking at imagery that people wanna hang on their walls. Photos clients choose to display always hold a special meaning to them. It's often beautiful, but also makes them smile or invokes special memories. 
Not unlike our individual taste in music, what people choose to display in their homes is diverse, fluid, and deeply personal, which is why images created for this week's challenge will be so much fun to see. Anyone who knows me knows that music is a huge part of my life. It's rare that you come to our home and there isn't music playing in at least one room. There is nothing that motivates me to crush my day more than my favorite music pumping loud. This week, the judges have asked you to choose a song that inspires or moves you and to create an image that conveys either the meaning of the lyrics or how the song makes you feel. When making your submission, remember to explain why you chose that particular song and include both a link to someplace we can hear your song as well as the lyrics. Judges will be looking for an image that incorporates tension, a decisive moment, and or some personal reflection. Your submissions are due no later than 7 p.m. on Sunday, March 14th, 2021. Happy shooting.